freaking what up, dude? Um, Strider Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's going to be called History is Nice. History is Day. So fucking dank, dude. Freaking what up? Welcome to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm Strider Wilson. We got Aaron on the sticks, just beasting it, dude. What up, Aaron, dude? What up? Dude, just chilling right now, dude. And I'm extra freaking stoked right now, dude, because we got two beasts, two legends, <laughs> dude, joining the podcast right now. Anthony Atemanik and John Gemberling. What up, bros? Hello, hi what Strider. Up? What up? How's hi, it Strider. going, guys? And this is very befitting that we're using this tech sort of, um, you know, doing a little like virtual phone call here because you guys have a legit ass podcast right here on the ATC network. What's up, company man? How's it going? Getting a few pats on the back at the holiday party. Thank you know what I'm you. saying? Uh, the Phony and Collie podcast with Tony and Johnny. Dude, I listened to it. It's hilarious. You guys are awesome, dude. You did? Thank you. Oh, you did really? Yeah. Thank you. He might thank be you lying, for plugging thank it, you anyway. setting it up. No, no, you guys are, yeah. look, 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 I'm a huge liar, a, really a bad guy. I'm just a bad guy. You got to realize that. Uh, I will hurt people I love, uh, and I do it frequently. And uh, But you guys are two buddies. One of you is in New York. Who's in New York right now? I'm in New York. John's in L.A. Okay, Tony's in New York. And, John's uh, in L.A. We, we took our phone calls that we've had for years since we moved to L.A., and during the pandemic, we went, well, why don't we just, like, uh, you know, turn it into a podcast, maybe make some dough off of these dithering, confused phone calls. And uh, that's what we did. It is. Uh, but we do have a, a big special coming up Monday the 20th, this Monday. It's a Christmas special with Paul F. Tompkins and oh, Gil nice. Ozeri and Andrea Rosa, Neil Casey, and John Gabris, and it is a an epic adventure. Dude, that's going to be amazing. Come out. When does this episode come out? This episode is going to come out on two a uh, week from today. So the sixteenth plus seven. <laughs> okay, what is that? So it's so, going to be passed. So, so forget it. Yeah, but you know what? If you didn't listen and you're listening now, <laughs> go back. Can they can they revisit the special? Is it going to be like posted? Yeah, it's no, going to be. Them. It's supposed so the, the next day you know, <laughs> we delete it. <laughs> well, here's the thing: you guys like to punish the listeners. If you're not there, get out. You know, you're either yeah, on board. You, there's two things in life: you're either in or you're out. And it sounds like yeah, you're not in. Yeah, we treat it like out. improv. Yeah, we treat it like improv. We release the podcast for the duration <laughs> of the podcast, and then we just re erase it so there's no record of our work. Could I be so bold as to say you guys are sort of the jazz of podcasts? Would you say it's just sort of just, you know, <laughs> getting in sync, being in tune, real, just really listening, you know, just really listening and dialing it in. Sometimes we, it's beautiful. We flow, but we also do a lot of um, production afterwards, so. You got to. You got to these days. <laughs> what do you guys think of my um Sick ass song. Did you guys like the bass on there? I get, I get a little bit oh, love the worried song. that there's not enough. I love bass. the opening. You guys were there's not there's bass. You guys were fired up in a, on the amount of bass. Yeah, yeah. I love bass. Okay, bass good. was jamming. It was pumping. And you know, John does all the music on our show, so like, you know, that's the real ear right there. You guys are you too. Know? You guys are two very talented fan uh, guys. I was gonna say, blend my sentence. I've been a fan for and a fans. long time. We're fans. And, uh, <laughs> what, what are you guys fans of? You guys got teams, huh? You guys got teams. Um, you guys, who I wanted to ask you guys, because you both do great character stuff that I've seen and impressions. And uh, John, you mentioned your musicality, which is awesome. Um, Thank who are your guys is like? big inspirations i mean are you guys like jerky boy fans crank yanker fans you know just sort of talking a little comedy shop before we dive into our history um and this just made me think of it like because you guys are doing stuff on the phone you know um oh yeah. yeah you guys um i guess well i i i enjoyed the jerky boys for like that stretch of like Napster. teen hood yeah i mean i loved like um I forget which Adam Sandler album it was. I listened to a lot with the goat and yes. the therapist. That's uh, the one right there. But in terms goat. of like audio stuff, that was great. Um, and you know, like Kids in the Hall, Monty Python. I had a Monty Python album of all their songs that I listened to a lot. I'm, as a kid. I'm old. 
I'm old. old, so I'll say that uh, I one I I let's I I also enjoy the Jerky Boys, especially the first uh, their first iteration, like their first release. Yeah, I remember really enjoying it, and it was um, it was uh, 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 something that I then revisited uh, when a friend of mine gave me like the like all their tracks, at, like when I was in like twenty. 2009 or something i was like oh yeah i was like they were so good so i love that and i always love the phony phone calls on stern and stuff so good um but but i would say my you know the people i mean i'm you know i used to listen to three albums over and over again which is a robin williams album a richard Pryor, and a carlin album when yeah. i was a kid because that's what my dad had in the house yeah and then I got into Red Fox. I started to find like old Red Fox stuff, and he was fucking filthy, yeah, uh, and wonderful. And even Mom's Mabley, like all those, you know, all those folks. I like the lineage of people who were willing to like really say shit. Those are like my, those are my favorite people. And oh, I listen to the Dennis Leary album a lot. Speaking oh, of oh yeah, Dennis Leary. Dennis, do you guys like Bill Hicks? And then I worked because yeah, he, 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 Leary's sort of an iteration of Bill Hicks. Are you guys Bill Hicks guys? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like Bill Hicks. I love Bill Hicks. Um, I had a roommate who listened to Bill Hicks too much. Yeah, and just hearing, he turned like, the, me off. A my bit. devil's dick. The devil's dick. Blah. Like, <laughs> yeah, there was a point at which I was like, uh, enough, uh, enough Bill Hicks. And, but yeah. then also yeah. like even people like Elaine, Elaine Boozler and Rita Rudner and and uh, Emo Phillips. Oh yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I just think about the people who I like watched when like I, we my family got like HBO. Totally. Um, totally. And, That's uh, what I oh, did. and what's her name from What's Happening? Shirley Hempel. I don't know if you ever saw Shirley Hempel do stand up. No. Nah. I got to see her when she was on dialysis, like near the end of her life. No way. And she went up with the machine and she did 20 minutes and it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Dude, that's and, amazing. And it was like, that's she amazing. was like near death. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's the new people like Blair Erskine and. Um, and Sydney Battle, you know, people you see online coming up who are really good. I love that. There you go. Dude, that's a nice Tony. <laughs> I appreciate that. And any Dankatorians, dude, that's what the listeners we call the listeners, you guys branding what up. Uh Dankatorians listening. Uh that's a nice little crash course in some com comedy right. That takes you through the ages. That like pretty much brings you up to the present. Um, I'm oh, a yeah. <laughs> huge, huge Carlin guy. Uh, his writing, his every the first special I ever watched. Like I didn't know what stand up was, like you mentioned on HBO. I forget which one it was, but he's like, here's a few people that should be hit with heavy pieces of mining equipment and left bleeding in the moon night light. Anybody named Todd? He's like, these Todds. And he just goes on and I'm like, dude, this. And there's just something about listening to it that's so great. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. You yeah. just feel the timing. Yeah. You like, you're using your imagination a little bit more. I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just great. Um, and speaking of yeah. listening. I remember being on an airplane as a kid and it was like an international flight. Like we were going to like, somewhere in Europe, like Italy or Spain or something. So it was a long flight and they had like radio, like a closed circuit loop of just like radio stuff. And there was a comedy channel. And I remember hearing uh, Paula Poundstone. Oh God. Yeah. Just over and over. It was the same because yeah. it looped her routine. It would like go through a few stuff and then loop back to hers. And it was her talking about like, her joke is like, I think I'm bulimic, but I'd keep forgetting to purge. And <laughs> just the way she said, I had no idea. I was like eight years old. I didn't know yeah. what she was talking about, but just the way she was saying it was funny. I listened to it over and over again on that flight. And then we watched yeah. Clue. It showed Clue. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I want to say one thing about Carlin, which I find interesting now, is you have so many people sort of playing hungry, hungry hippo to claim Carlin for their you know, sort of reasoning, right? Mm -hmm. In their yeah. their their comedy. And I think the best thing is his daughter, who I've become friends with on on Twitter, uh, posted something that was sort of put the lid on the idea that people can claim her father's uh, point of view to, to to sort of defend exclusionary thinking. And I thought that was a really uh, good thing yeah. that his daughter sort of put the put the nail in the coffin because i mean obviously yes there's you know i'm a huge free speecher so but totally. i'm also like free speech has consequences that's what happens if you say shit and people don't like it they're gonna tell you to fuck off can yeah, i swear 
Yeah, of course you can swear, dude. Get after it on here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, speaking of Carlin, Shit. cunt, fuck, pussy. He's got his seven swear words, dude. I'll get after. It's and great. you know, dude, I did some sketch comedy with Kelly Carlin. She, she's awesome. Uh, yeah, back Kelly's in, great. Um, at Second City out here in in L.A., not the the one in Chicago. Um, but that's awesome, man, dude. Uh, I love that. She's awesome. Um, so real quick, before we get into our historical topic today, which is going to be Very the invention sad. of the telephone in honor of your guys' um, Phony Collie podcast, with Tony telephone and Johnny. based. Exactly. I'm like, let's just get Thank after it. Thank you for it. tailoring the content. I like it. I'm like, look, let's just get in. Let's get in, get after it. I think you guys are going to have some nice opinions on it. And what we do to sort of kick things off on here is do like a brief personal history share you know what i mean dude so i'll go first to give you guys a little example and i think an, a fun one could be um just basically like what ha what's your biggest piece of personal history that maybe happened over the phone or what did you hear on the Ooh. phone or something that involves a phone in any fun way it doesn't matter dude i'm fired up to talk to you about haver supply dude my boy brad is putting out epic lids dude vintage bespoke lids i'm sporting mine right now dude I love it, dude. Honestly, dude, it's such a sick lid that I can get away with using the term sporting, which is what I feel like something dads do, dude. But I'm not a freaking dad, dude. But you know what, dude? Even if you are, dude, you are not done being cool because you got your epic lid, dude. Vintage throwback style. I wear it when I'm cruising out golfing with the bros, dude. Christmas tree hunting with the dank fiance, dude, and just cruising around in my car, lid back, no shirt on, dog in lap tunes blasting feeling good it's my active lid dude and right now dude for listeners you can get 20 percent off your order with code dank at checkout go to haversupply.com and enter code dank at checkout for 20 percent off that's haversupply.com code dank for 20 percent off at checkout this app is also brought to you by green chef dude green chef makes eating well easy with plans fit for every lifestyle dude my freaking dank fiance and i we do the plant-based one and I'm telling you right now, I don't miss the meat. It's delicious, dude. I don't care what your diet is, keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, Green Chef makes it easy, dude. And the recipes are dank, dude. And they suit any of your preferences. So, And it's also sustainable, which fires me up. So go to greenchef.com slash dank10 and use code dank10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash dank10 and use code dank10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Get Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Um, for me, one of my biggest moments on the phone was, and this might age me a little bit, this was before cell phones. And in sixth grade, I asked out Danielle Schultz um, to be my girlfriend oh, right, yeah. right before summer strategically because if she said no then no one would see me at school and it'd be fine. It'd be summer break. So it'd be chill. Oh, but she said, yes, smart. she said, yes. And dude, she's a very kind person. Then my buddy, uh, Cinderhoff came and told me, he's like, Danielle doesn't even like you. She just said she might be able to learn to like you. I was like, fuck you, but that's so nice of her. <laughs> so it's pretty incredible. Um, then I remember <laughs> this is before cell phones, dude. And I call her up on her house phone. I use like the school directory book that you got that everyone's phones listed in it, where we also used to like blindly scroll our fingers through in high school and like land on a girl's name. And it was like, you got to call Christy. Uh, also a fun game we used to play. But I, uh, so I called Danielle being like, she's my girlfriend now. I got to call my girlfriend. You know, this is what I got to do. I just, pl I just played Goldeneye. I ate some nuggets and I got to call my <laughs> girlfriend. And I, I call her up. Her mom answers, dude. Um, like, hey, is Danielle there? And this was right before summer break. And uh, she's like, uh, okay, let me go check. Hold on one second. She comes back. She's like, oh, Danielle's doing homework. Um, can she call you back? I'm like, yeah, for sure. She never called me back. We never talked again. She's married and has kids now. Technically never broke up. <laughs> <laughs> My God, she's cheating on you. Yeah. Polygamous. She's yeah. polygamous. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty progressive. Progre it, I think she did ballet. So real progressive in probably a lot of ways that I'll never know about. So I'm over here. Oh, my God. You know, so that's basically a big piece of history, basically informed the rest of my high school career and dealing with ladies and, and led heartbreak. me to, oh, totally, dude. But I told myself from that moment on, first lady to have repeat sex with me, I'm going to lock it down. And I got engaged. So this past summer, so I'm fired up on that. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. This past summer was the first repeat sex Yeah, that's it, experience? dude. Experience? Yeah, yeah. Repeat sex experience. You know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, a few decades into my life and then some. And I finally had that. And I'm like, this is nice. I'm going to keep this going. Um, 
Do you want to be a team? Before that, it was like one and done. It was just beasting sex. That's what I mean, dude. A lot of my bros are beasting sex. They're like, look, dude, I got after it. Um, it was fun. Got my nut. For me, it's like blah, 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 45 minutes, then my turn. And that's <laughs> sort of my style. And It's binary. It's still one at a time. Yeah, it works. You know, you know the B dies after. Yeah, yeah, the bee. Yeah, the bee does. There's a lot of vicious sexual acts in nature. The praying mantis eats the male. We got lucky. Wait, as the bee dudes. dies after sex. Yeah, yeah. The bee. No, the bee dies after a sting oh. and after sex. But I, Both. you got to imagine a Both? good, a good sting. John died twice. Might make the bee come. A good sting if it really gets yes. you nice. You know, it might. If you got a really, you know, a sadistic bee. It might not. Yeah. Stinging you. Well, that's Tupelo honey. People don't know this. That oh. Tupelo honey is bee cum. Oh, really? That's the Van Morrison album as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. It, but the, I, I don't mean the actual I mean, honey. I mean the Van Morrison album is made out of bee cum. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the wax. That Hey, that's how they do it. They put it on yeah, wax. Press. Van, that's how they put it, it on wax. You know, and then... Uh, <laughs> when so, you say a lot of people don't know this, Tupelo honey is bee cum, what does that mean? Yeah, uh, Tony, explore. Well, it's actually... Uh, it's, a, it's a novel I'm writing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> is it bee cum? No, it's bee vomit. Honey oh, is okay. bee vomit. Yeah. Oh, That's really? What vegans will tell you that. Vegans will, like, you know, have an apoplectic fit about it. I heard that honey never goes bad. Is that true? Like, jarred honey? Like, you could put, you should put yeah. that in your... Yeah, you... You look like two yeah. guys who got doomsday bunkers. I mean, I look like two fellow... I'm talking to two fellow <laughs> patriots here. And I gotta say, we both got doomsday <laughs> bunkers. And all three of us. And, I mean, do you got honey in there? So guys, quick no, pro tip. I have I have my water filtration tablets. Though. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a military grade water filter that I have no idea how to use. That Dude, my uncle uh, bought me. That, did you buy that like in COVID? You're like, I need to get my own water. Like you have like charcoal shit that it, like you know gravity will. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, dude. Yeah. Once my dad ordered, here's my favorite is my father, because I was telling my dad how I'm getting canned goods and like making sure to just in case things go south with the pandemic and, and, and in March of 2020. And my dad, who is like my father's like a hip musician guy, like not religious, not anything. But for some reason, he was like, I don't know, man, I caught this thing on some channel and they were selling food buckets. So I ordered one of these food buckets thinking, hey, that way I'll have some food. And, and I was like, what did you watch? And he's like, I think it was like Jim Baker. I was like, dad, I was like, what are you doing? He was like, it was pretty funny, man. It was it was it was wild. They're crazy. And he's like, now I got this stupid bucket. And he just like bought one bucket of food and he has it in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> what he kind of food is it? Constantly. He said it was some like 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 some like rice and cheese combo thing, like something disgusting. In a bucket, dude. That's amazing. That's hilarious. Oh my! I don't God. understand what what are you living for? Like if you like, I got a bunch of food to last me like an extra month, and John, then I exactly. die like a month after everybody else. Exactly. You get you get yeah. to watch everyone you care about. You're basically guaranteeing more sadness for yourself. Like I want to watch everyone yeah. die, have a bad meal, then die. Like well, yes. I want the road. I want the road. Oh, or bro, Daisy. the road. Yeah. I want that like yeah. that like I just get by and I'm in a hovel and I have just a can and I find like a I find a winter jacket and that's my jacket. Yeah, there's some child I have to protect. Dude, p what is like that? fashion? Is oh, the pretty child sick. is giving you a sense of hope. The child's giving me a sense of hope. So you've got yeah. to get a child. So I got to find a child. The bunker has so to, have to kid can food and a child. Yeah. In the post-apocalyptic, I have to kidnap a child because I don't have one. <laughs> and then I have to like convince it that it's safe with me yeah. and then take it on an adventure where I die in front of it. Yes. But eventually, yes. if the apocalypse doesn't happen, the f canned food starts to go bad. The child starts to get too old to be inspiring. And I've been prosecuted for kidnapping <laughs> a child. So, yeah, it can really go south. Well, you got to go to a nice school. You got to go to, you got to get a kid who plays an instrument who's going to be some sort of art, has a good memory or some something shit like that, you know, yeah. can yeah. recite poetry. Entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Even just then dance. If you meet a band, cannibals or something, you could be like, no, no, wait, watch this. And then put the child up on like a tree stump and have it like play a little music to. Exactly. Yeah, dinner theater while they eat your fingers. Guys, before we, before we take his foot, Think again, and Daniel, here we go. And then you know he's two step yeah. in, and everyone's like, "All right." And you're like, "Come on, no!" <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have. Dude, a that's phone. I have a, a pretty major phone story. Oh, let's go! I love it, Tony. Um, so the the short version 
I worked at a restaurant in New England where the I was 20 and the owner's wife was 37. And I ended up having a year long affair with the owner's wife. No way. Yes. Dude. And it was intense. Uh, and at the time, I thought I was the only person. It ended also. Aside from her husband. Ex <laughs> aside from so her husband. So you thought you were in a love triangle. Fair eat. But yeah. you might have been in like a, a love octagon. Yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dude, amazing. Tesseract. Yeah, in the Tesseract. Yeah, this is very yeah. cool. You were was getting inverted. You could travel through time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it ended very sort of toxically when I was like, oh, this is crazy. I think my grandmother actually was like, you need to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> like ah, dude, amazing, bro. And so I tried to get out and I ended up actually moving to Los Angeles to get out. Like what? I had to like leave the job and like I was leave I was getting out of college. So it made sort of sense. And I moved to L.A. And a few years later, uh, I'm at an apartment that I wouldn't even live at. I like was couch surfing. And somehow this guy got my number and I get a phone call the from the husband who I knew and like knew well, like we went on vacations together and all kinds of stuff when I worked at this job. And I like it was a him. true betrayal, a true betrayal. True yeah, this betrayal. is some Shakespearean true betrayal. And uh, he just said, hello, this is blah, blah, blah. Um, he was French. He was a French pastry chef. Dude, you must um, be good at boning, Tony. I just want to say that if you are able to up a French dude who makes good pastries, <laughs> that means you're good at boning in my book. So thank just you. want that noted for the listeners. I was delivering the pastry cream, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes, I do, because guess what? I'm a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, uh, this is a great story. He confronted Tony. me. He confronted me, no and way. I confessed. And I said, you know what? I said, the best I can do is be honest with you now. And it turned out that he was in a divorce proceeding and there had been a number of other people who this person had been in an affair with. And I I was like, what can I do? I was like, I am like, I left this behind, you know, but I realized like, obviously it's open for you. And he was like, well, you could give a deposition because she's lying about all the uh, affairs. And so I gave a remote deposition Dude. for him in the divorce in order to try to correct my karma. That's a good move. They, I, that's great. So you double fucked his wife. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you betrayed uh -huh. both of them. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, hey, John has an undeniable point here. He has an undeniable point. And you know what? Damn it, do I respect Tony's integrity, and I I, I love the redemption. Um, Thank you. Look, look. <laughs> if 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 later, I, or at least just honesty here on the podcast, uh, that's what we're all about here at History is Dank, dude. So Tony, appreciate that. And John is so right. You double fucked his wife, dude. <laughs> yeah. His integrity. Amazing, dude. So you got he that flipped, call out of the blue. The guy's wife, and then he flipped on her. Yeah. Turned yeah. State yeah. <laughs> Full immunity. Dude, that's gold. Oh my God. That's gold. Hey, you did not commit. You're not a perjurer, though. You did not, not commit perjury in the court of that's law. That's right. You're I honest. didn't commit perjury. You're at least in that. Yeah. Yes. At least in that instance. Um, He's not a perjurer. He is a perjurer. Yes. <laughs> Uh, John, what's up, dude? You're up. Your turn. <laughs> try, try to top Tony's story. I mean, Tony, that's a great story, man. I, that's amazing. Yeah, come on, John. That's some Powell life Stone. experience, guys. No, I can't top Tony's story. You don't need a one-up. It's a personal uh, thing. We can't compare. Compare and despair, guys. Yeah. For life. I hate to do that. I hate that thing in comedy where it's like comedy contest. I'm like, dude, I hate that type of shit. Let's just let everyone go up here and say yeah. their piece. Yeah. Well, your story about asking, I, I think I only ever asked one girl out in school mm -hmm. and I called her. I didn't think of the summer thing. Yeah. Um, so I called her, I think just in the middle of the year. I don't remember her last name. Her name was Savannah though. Her first name. <laughs> Whoa. Um, Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, what and, year are we talking? Uh, what, uh, what grade were you in, John? I high school 
be like eighth or ninth grade. Okay. Okay. Eighth, ninth, tenth grade. Right. And I was like so nervous to do it because I'd never done it. I was like, hi, it's John. What do you want to go? I like said it all in one sentence and yeah. I like, get to the end of this sentence and she goes, John, which John? John who? I was like, John. <laughs> I like hung up the phone. Oh, like, no. oh no! Oh no! And the next day, the next day, as soon as I get to school, my friend Mike, who was good friends with her, like immediately walks up to me. And was like, uh, Savannah said you called her last night, and uh, I was like, really? Like you asked her out? The way he said it was like, what did you think you were doing? He was yeah. Like chubby little fucking. <laughs> you uh, asked because she was beautiful. She was like <laughs> gorgeous. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Dude. Um, it's tough, man, putting yourself on the line. And especially that age, man. Eighth grade, middle school, formative years. Not uh, easy, man. Not easy. What is it about being like, I was the, uh, I guess you were sort of heavy in, at that time, John, and I was the opposite. I was like rail thin with a huge nose, which is still here. Yeah, I was um, rail thin with a tiny what, penis. Still, <laughs> yeah, and I, but I wonder what is it about that that makes you then aim? I always aim for the rafters. I never was like, I never was like, oh, here's like a like I look at my high school like yearbook if I go home and I look at it, you know, if I find it in the basement, and I look, I go, wow, I was like a lot of girls in our class were like you know, attractive and like, you know, nice. And there were girls I was friends with who were attractive and nice. And I never, ever, I was like, no, I was like, whoever is like the prized girl in high school, that's the one or junior, that's the one I have to go for. Mm -hmm. what, what that logic is when you're that age, because it's like, you're just setting yourself up to really like, it's like a lottery win if you get it. I mean, it's whoever you become infatuated with, I guess. I mean, yeah. my my romantic experiences have either been with people I was infatuated with to the point where I had to overcome my nerves at approaching them or people who were just attra so attracted to me that I like didn't have to do any of the work and was basically like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. that never happened to me. Yeah. Oh, it right. did. So oh, stop. No, not in junior high or high school. Oh, not no, no, not in high school. Year. God, no, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. But no, now no. you guys, College are, is you guys are smart. Story. College is great. That's when it really, because we're putting so much pressure on ourselves in high school. It's our little pond. We think in high school, you think, you yeah. know, the world, that's your whole world. Everything matters so much. And then you talk to anyone older. Do you always hear the cliche? Just wait, give it time, get to college. But it's so true. It's why it's a cliche. But it's like, I think even, John, to answer your question about why we always go for, maybe Tony, you were saying, why do we always go for the top attractive? Like, I think it's just, you know, maybe from a historical lens of like, you have, your DNA is telling you like breeding and stuff like go for the top highest breed, you know, in like your DNA <laughs> and like the social circles around you, like that's what everyone's going for. And it'd be funny if like, if any high school or middle schooler had the awareness of being like, nah, Eight from me. I'm going middle of the road, like already. Like you need to find out. Like you need to find out where you fall on the scale, and you got to go for the top. And, and then, meanwhile, I'm like a two in high school. <laughs> no, you're I'm like not a two. two. No, but and you're, you're no. a smart, funny guy, so it's, it's also, different. And also, it's like it's a you. If we're using this sort of bizarre ranking system, it's like the ten in your mind is like only like all surface, like toxic attachments to these things. Right. Whereas there's all these people who are like regular good people who like you interact with and you're like, nope, fuck them. No, yeah. no way. Yeah. I want that unavailable person who like only based on purely on my surface interactions. Am I obsessed with them? <laughs> well, that becomes about you then, right? Then, then yes. if I'm the type of person that can be with that, unattainable yeah. person that makes me special yeah yeah exactly. yeah it's very self-serving it is very self-serving at, yeah. at the beginning middle and end of the day it's true and then but you know yeah the exactly. best love is a but integrity love. somewhere in there we're seeing integrity i, I think yeah, there's yeah. integrity there? anthony was going <laughs> tony when he was with <laughs> at his new england restaurant let me ask you what was the food like at that new england restaurant was it good i mean did you miss out on any clam chowder because of that 
you know, and well, more no, lobster. this particular place was a French, French and pastries. Cambodian fusion. Whoa, restaurant. that sounds yeah amazing. People might be able to guess what it is based on that. And it was like very popular in the mid '90s. It was one of the hottest places in Boston to go to. Cambodian. And, uh, it was really good, huh? Cambodian Sorry. food. Cambodian food and wow. French food, and the menu is divided. And uh, I waited on Bryant Gumble a lot. Oh, nice. And Greg Gumble. Bryant Gumble's got one Bryant of my favorite Gumbel. quotes from the they Magic ordered and the Gumbo. They ordered, <laughs> There's yeah. no Gumbo. <laughs> gumbo, Gumbo got the Gumbo. <laughs> uh, dude, that's hilarious. Well, dudes. Let's just move through our, into our historical subject. Now you Dankatorians okay. have gotten to know Tony and John a little bit more, um, as have I. Two great dudes, great bros. Um, real quick, actually, I want to ask you guys this before we dive in. How did you guys become become bros? I mean, I'm fired up on, on how bros meet and sort of like, you know, I love love and I love a nice meet cute and film, but I also love friendship. And how did you guys become friends or... Um, you know, did it slowly well, develop? We met or? in uh, New York at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater in nice. maybe 2003, I think. Yep. Oh, nice. Uh, you guys are like and we started power. working together in an improvised movie class that we both were taking. That's pretty sweet. Um, and I was and I was taken with John's portrayal of a weather system <laughs> in, in, in the first class we were doing and, a disaster uh, movie format and i, I said i got to become friends with this guy <laughs> dude that's great i mean that's like what those theaters are built for you know what i mean like speaking of high school and going after the big girl like you can get it go to a ucb or a second city like me out here and be like man i need to be in that main stage show or i need to be in that showcase show but it's like no, that place is built for exactly what you guys have, is meeting people who share your humor and you can go on and make shit with. So that yeah. fires me up to hear that. Like, that's yeah. like the healthiest. And I feel like, honestly, like any a little bit of silver lining with this whole fucking pandemic is like people kind of getting out of that. Because, dude, it can be pretty like culty Scientology. You know what I mean? Like you go through rank. Like you can really throw a lot of dough and, and time into those places. And, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. when I taught there, I used to always say to the students and stuff, I'd be like, listen, like you get on a Herald team or whatever, a weekend team or whatever. It's like it doesn't like it doesn't matter. It matters the relationships you make and whether you produce work. Correct. You know, the rest of it. I mean, you, oh, wonderful. So you're on the you know, I used to sit in the room because we were on the top weekend team or whatever, you know, the popular group Pinnacle. of the thing. The pinnacle. We were the pinnacle of improv at that theater, and uh, and uh, and I would sit there and I'd go, look, I go, this is it. This is the peak. Yeah. I'm sitting here with you, idiots. Like, so it can't be that good. You want this, huh? You want this, and then you're drinking a whiskey. It's 11 a.m. All right, now give me a suggestion. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um. All right. Well, dudes, Johnny, Tony, um, we're gonna talk about the invention of the telephone, but really more so in my research, it led me to just talk about Graham Bell. And I mean, let's look at anything with history. It's like, look, we could talk about how the first device worked and I'll get into it in a little bit, but first, like just a little bit about the man. I mean, the characters and the figures of history are the more interesting part to me anyway. Um, but there's obviously a little bit of controversy. You guys know, and, and, and it's the popular belief here that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Like if I say that to you, that you wouldn't go, you're lying. You'd say that sounds true. Yeah, you'd go, yeah. And he goes, hi, well, Watson, right? Isn't that the whole thing? Yeah, he says, Mr. Yeah. Watson, can you come over here? And he goes, right away. And like, it, it works. And he was at like, um, I forget what university. Um, but he actually is the first one to patent the telephone. There right. were, right, he has, huh. and he had specific language in there that gave him the US patent, which then led to him becoming a, you know, friggin' millionaire. Um, and it was like to transmit voice because there were other U.S. patents and the film was the first phone was actually developed in 1830 by an Italian inventor, Mucci, M-E-U-C-C-I is his name. Of course. Yep. And so he basically takes his design and then later there's a Frenchman um, who comes in. This guy, uh, Esterne um, Mochi. Um, and he actually worked in Mucci theater. Mucci and Mochi? Hold on, wait. Yeah. Mucci and Mochi? 
Yeah, there's Mucci, no. M-E-U-C-C-I. An Italian and, guy named Mucci made the phone, and then a French and, guy named Mucci made yes, the phone? Yes, Antonio Mucci, M-E-U-C-C-I, and then Estern Mucci, <laughs> dude, in 1834. Mucci, Mucci, Mucci. Yeah. yeah, one of them worked in a the theater, and he and that's what gave him the idea. He's like, he, you know, they're using devices to project in the theater and talk to each other. Um, and then Bell... He, he was um, interested in creating the telephone because his mom was hearing impaired. His wife was hearing impaired. He actually met his wife, like, working under his father, who developed, like, a visible, um, uh, not Braille, but just, like, visible signs that then deaf people would, it would indicate them to make an auditory noise, and then they could sort of speak with people or something like that. Um, Can't they just read? What's that? Couldn't they just read? Yeah, totally. I don't know like why. I'm like looking at this <laughs> thing, and, and it also sounds like words, isn't it? even if they make the noise, they're not going to be able to hear it. So I'm also like, what? When I was reading, it, I was like, I didn't quite get what that whole thing was. But in any, well, in, a lot of they had to learn a lot how to uh, make sounds, make intelligible sounds, even though they couldn't hear it. My father actually worked in a school for the deaf. Oh, really? As his service during Vietnam, he was a conscientious objector. Oh, and whoa. he was assigned to work at the Lexington School for the Deaf. That's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, well, John, that's why I'm we're fortunate to have you on here and your father's <laughs> experience, dude, because that keeps us up to speed. And so uh, you could say that Bell had an investment in hearing and in, in, in phonics, and he worked with uh, transmitting sound waves, and then he, he gets uh, some investors later on that really set him up for success to create the first uh, patent of a telephone, and obviously using the models from Mochi and Mochi, which is amazing. Mucci what and year Mochi. did he develop his technology? So Mochi was 1830, right? And then on February 14th, 1876, and this is hours before his rival, there's this lady, Alicia Gray, she filed a patent, but like I mentioned, it didn't have that specific um, language in there. And then on March 7th, um, 29 years old, Bell was awarded that patent, dude. 29, In 1870, dude. so 40 years after Mucci? Mm -hmm. Yep, 1876, so about 40 years. And then the really the Frenchman made like the biggest step in 34, so yeah, about 40 years, 40 and change years. But he was 29 years wow. old when he did that. What were you guys doing at 29? Pinnacle? You guys were Pinnacle at UCB Theater, I would imagine. <laughs> at 29... What would that be? 30 would be 2004. That we were meeting. I was meeting John. Oh, that's 29. great. You guys were you guys were dominating. That's I love that. I like to think to, to myself I go when I'm laying in bed at night, you know, after I've brushed my teeth, thinking back on some jokes I had that day and, you know, sometimes they don't go so well and I just go oh, to myself, uh I'm thinking if I was 29 like I didn't have distractions, like I love bonfires, I love playing beer pong. Um, I love gaming and, and, you know, I do, and I'll say it, I love jacking off. Um, if I didn't do those things, I would say to myself, do you think I could have been a doctor? Like if I didn't have these, like, <laughs> like if it's 1876, you know what I mean? Like I don't have distractions. Like, yeah, jacking off exists, but like there's no internet. Like I would just be dialed in and focused. Right. And I, I mean, I'm sure Graham Bell was jacking off on yeah. his phone. And you go to a, oh, totally. Yeah. Dude, when on his think, prototype. When did the first person have phone sex after that? Psh, come on. I think when he said, Watson, get over here, I think he got over <laughs> his floor, so yeah, He did call. tell him to come over here. <laughs> Bro, cruise over. I do kind of like that the first phone call was like, yo, let's hang out. Get over here. Like, it's just, <laughs> come on. Um, that's hilarious, dude. Dude, some other fun things about Graham Bell. You know, he invented a metal detector. Uh, oh. yeah. Gar uh, James Garfield got shot and he was actually killed. He was an assassinated president. Um, yes. but to find the bullet in him because he's using like electrical waves and like in developing like dialers, he's able to like, I don't know, he developed some technology. Um, and he tested it on like old civil war veterans who had bullets in their bodies, yeah. but were like just living with bullets in their bodies, like in their arm or, you know, somewhere not, um, fatal. And so he would detect yeah. it. But the doctor for the president was so like insecure and egotistical. He's like, you can search your metal detector, but you can only do it on the right side of the body. And he's like, no, just let me do the whole body. And the doctor's like, no, 
And so he only searches the right side of the body, doesn't find it. Then in the autopsy, the fucking bullet's in the left side of the body, and they weren't able to remove it, and he dies of infection. Wow. So this is when he was alive. Mm -hmm. This was in 1881, July 2nd, 1881. So right after he hubris. the telephone. Total hubris. Why was the doctor, why was the president's doctor so... Yeah, he's a jack. Uh, hubris. Intimidated by... Graham Bell. He's like, He yeah, wasn't trying no. to invent things, was he? You can take your phone, you can stick it up your ass. You know? Like, yeah. That's what he said. Well, because he's like, I'm the president's doctor and your magic machine that finds metal is bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm the doctor. Don't worry. I've got it. Exactly. Also, medical people, God bless them. They're saving us with the pandemic. But they're also like surgeons are like the profile of surgeons is that they're most likely narcissistic sociopaths. Most of them. Totally. People who get into medicine tend to be very like in like, you know, yes, they're very wonderful about taking care of people but it's think of the personality that gets into politics into medicine anything where you are like lauded for being like saving people correct you know correct it's a and little so bit. that you know that's the personality profile of apparently that asshole totally Garfield's a little bit of a messiah doctor, whose Ma name was dr reginald Odie. Really? Oh, you guys are both looking stuff. Dude, up. Tony. No. Fucking just Odie and Garfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, dude, you got to thank Garfield here. And uh, guys, I'm going to go out on a limb. Dr. Arbuckle, get over here. <laughs> Is this too bold of me to say that perhaps um, Graham Bell's, you know, I would say the telephone is his greatest, I would say patent. I would I would amend that here, not say invention, it's his greatest patent. But it sounds Can like- Can I ask yeah. you, do you know yeah. what, did he develop any technology? He did. He that did. those other guys didn't? He, yeah, he did t make some advancements with it. He did, let me see, I put it down here. Um, so basically, his big, um, he had something called a liquid transmitter which was really big for him. There you go. Uh, and he would put like um, some chemical on there that that is what would um, hit like, so it says here, he had a liquid tr transmitter, which was basically, that's the vertical cone with a piece of parchment. So that's just a hose? It's like, it's like, you know when you picture that first phone, it's like a vertical thing. They called it a candlestick phone, yeah. like vertical, then you pick up the dial, and then you're like here, and yeah. they're talking here. Um, so he, that was his big thing. The other ones looked like, kind of like, old like um what are those things called like record player like uh with the big ass horn yeah they kind of look like a gramophone which funny enough is oh, not so you like spoke Graham into Bell. it yeah and, and it's then that, it came out the horn exactly and that liquid transmitter is what it would create a vibration and then go through like it in parchment in the paper and that movement would then get put into like a coil and that enabled the voice to then become an electric signal and then travel mm -hmm. um through so that was like the huge thing the other ones like had some form of that but didn't quite work as well as his you know 30 years later he was able to develop better technology based on that but it, it was um diluted sulfuric acid was the liquid that he would use and it would and glued a cork with a needle stick in it um that hit a tiny cup in this like um and it's like a parchment stretched over a cone so basically vibration that movement would create an electrical signal and send the voice over, uh, which is. I would lose my mind trying to invent shit like that back then. Bro, isn't that like. like just think I, about all the yeah. stuff that would go wrong. I would never, ever think to do that. First of all, like when I was doing this research, I was like, wait, what the fuck is like electrical power and signals? And I was like, well, then I just read on it. It's like, it's just like it has to come back to something natural, which is just like movement or heat, right? So you need to take yeah. that. So he takes vibration, AKA movement, and then converts it. You need a converter and then like a transmitter. So like, you know, in his probably like in like, I didn't take a fucking electrical engineering class in college. Um, but like, you probably learned that day one. You're like, oh, you need your source. You need your converter. You need your storage thing. So yeah. basically. But I still don't understand how like vibrations or frequencies or electrical signals can be converted like how a voice can convert into those and then convert back into a voice. I agree. Or a song. Or whatever. Well, it's the movement. Dude, it's sure. the it's 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 creating a thing that will duplicate 
the 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 way the currents come in, I presume it would then duplicate the movement so that then whatever is the thing putting it out just may like when you you even when you're on your speakerphone on your iPhone and if you are close, it like pushes air out when someone's talking. Yeah. Because the sound is pushing air. So it's almost like you feel like someone's like breath is like on your face if you're like holding your phone up talking like this. So it's all it's it's the way that the the sound like the way the the vibrations come out and they're shaped by the speaker. But just with non computer, like I understand if you go, well, there's a computer program that knows how to do it. But if it's just like a needle on a record player that's feeding into a speaker, yeah, it's wild. How the hell is it doing that? It's crazy. Yeah. It's that's like how there's people smarter than me, and you know maybe this is I don't want to get political and stuff. No. But like, even with this fucking virus that's going on, like there's stuff I'm not supposed to understand. And I'm okay with that. I'm like, bro, yeah. I'm not supposed to understand how that works. And thank God there's someone that is, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I have like a fucking heater. Like I could like, think about the stuff, like the apartment I live in. I have all these complaints. Like, I don't know how to do half the shit. I'm just so like, yeah. thank God for other people, except for traffic. Get out yeah. of my way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank God there's someone to fix. There's a plumber. There's a doctor. Mm -hmm. and you're Not, supposed to listen to those people. Except That's for Garfield's it. doctor. That's simple. Let me ask you something, dude. Have you ever just wanted to cruise to a freaking festival like, I don't know, Burning Man wearing nothing but your lid, dude? Your freaking legit hat? Well, if I did, it'd be wearing my Haver Supply hat, dude, because Haver Supply's got the most legit bespoke small batch custom lids dude they're freaking so sick dude i'm wearing mine right now i got the the holiday feel to it dude it's got the nice trim on there dude it's got the og haver patch dude i love sporting it dude when i'm just even if i'm just posted up at home dude sipping on a nice little ip after a hard day's work dude i throw the lid on dude honestly on the way to work in the morning it's how i do my hair dude Throw the lid on backwards, take it off, and it looks sick when I get into work, dude. Honestly, sometimes I do wear it to work, and the managers are like, yo, you got to take that off. It's the only time I've ever been asked, dude, to take that off. Christmas dinner table, dude. Thanksgiving dinner table, I keep it on, dude. Church, God likes it, dude. God likes that I'm posted up in this hat, dude. And I wear it golfing with the boys, hiking with my fiance, just throw it on when I go out walking the dog. I have it ready to go on my coat rack, which I don't have because I'm in LA. So it's just my hat rack, dude. And I got my havers ready to go, bro. Um, yeah, I'm wearing them all the time, dude. It's got that nice active vibe, dude. It's basically, you know, tailored to the adventure, surfer, wanderer in you. And um, it just perpetuates that, dude. It's if you want to be, do something epic, dude, shh, it makes you feel epic. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, it makes me take even more legit risks now that I'm wearing this hat. Like sometimes, you know, I'll be posting up at home, dude. And I'm like, do I want to risk going and getting a latte right now? Walking the dog in there, dude. And sometimes Sonny gets scared. He sees me put the lid on. He trusts me more, dude. That's how legit this thing is, dude. For real, dude. And they just look sick, dude. And they make for great gifts. So this holiday season, dude, listeners, you can get 20% off your order with code DANK at checkout. Go to haversupply.com and enter code DANK at checkout for 20% off. That's haversupply.com, code DANK for 20% off at checkout. Once again, dude, Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans fit for every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat eat more balanced meals. Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preference. And dude, I love it. And my fiance love it it's because it's sustainable meal kit, dude. Green Chef, dude, is the most sustainable meal kit offering 100% of their plastic packaging in every box or offsetting, excuse me, and 100% of their carbon footprint and emissions, dude. They offset it all, bro, while creating dank meals for you to enjoy. It's convenient and easy, dude. They're easy recipes. They're meal planning. Just, you know, I cruise in, I grab my little bag out of the fridge, and I go, I look at my dank fiance, and I go, we got something legit to eat tonight. Let's do this. And honestly, we do the plant-based ones. And I'm telling you right now, I don't even miss the meat, and I'm sure the meat ones are absolutely delicious. But, you know, me and my, my fiancé, we like to eat vegetarian, and they got vegan options too, like I just said. So, And they're all delicious, dude. We crushed some Harissa Spiced uh, sweet potato tacos the other night, and I'm telling you, bomb, dude. So good. 
so good. Felt like I was working in a friggin' restaurant, dude. I was like, I looked at my fiance. We live in LA. I'd be like, I would overpay for these. But you know what, dude? The deal that they're offering right now, that Green Chef is offering right now is legit. You will be so stoked on it. Um, no matter what your diet is, dude. And by going to Green Chef, com slash dank10 and using code dank to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash dank10 and use code dank10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Trust me, you'll be giving yourself a good deal and you'll be treating your body right. <sighs> Legit, dude, Green Chef. And thank God for yeah. Graham Bell for inventing the metal detector, because otherwise, what would adult virgins yeah. do on the beach? You know what <laughs> I mean? True. Like, I'll, I'll, here's what I'll ask you guys: Do you think metal detector usage has an inverse correlation to amount of dong usage, as in boning? Like, do you think the yeah. more you're using your metal detector, the less you're boning, or do you think it's like maybe you do I bone a lot it's... and you're just like, I like to use a metal detector? I mean, well, whenever one like, of those guys yeah. wands me at the airport, I, I do think there's a bit of a desperate look in their eye. Oh, that's a great call. Yeah, and you got to th do you think that guy's going, hey, hey, I'll, I'll get on that. I'll get on Juan duty today. <laughs> I got Juan duty, guys. Yeah. Don't, guys, I'll bite the bullet. I know. I'll be in people's comfort bubbles. I'll bite the bullet. I'll take Juan duty. Yeah. He's like, oh, sorry. We got to feel you up. Yeah. <laughs> they always want to check your waistband. Every time. Yeah, they do. Have you ever had your waist? Have you ever been like frisked and patted down at the airport? Yeah, I've never been taken into a room, but every now and then they're like, got to check your waistband. Yeah. And they always do it. Uh, I think, I guess because so many, they have to deal with people every day who are like, oh, I'm not comfortable with this. That they always ask in like the most sort of like, uh, like, please be okay with it. It's like they make it more <laughs> weird. But they're like, okay, I'm going to put my hands in your waistband. Is yeah. that okay? And I'm like, oh my um, God. Yes. You can like it. fist my ass <laughs> if I can just get to the plane. I don't fucking care. That's so true. Like, Dude. I do not care about touching my body. That's such a good Skip call. To the Hudson News for a $6 bag of peanut M&M's. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Dude, I feel like the image. Dude, you give me a Cinnabon, of, you can stick metal. anything in my barn what's that what'd you say tony i just i just feel like the image of a metal detector is such a late 70s early 80s image like the yeah, guy on like the, the beach wrist. with the metal detector was a big cutaway totally to establish that you were in southern california like i'm thinking they're real though uh, we, anytime we go to the beach here they're there oh yeah those dudes exist they're out there what they're could you there. possibly find on a heavily populated beach what treasure could you find? That's what I don't get. I know. Has anyone ever found anything of value using one of those metal detectors beyond like a, a coin? You could even detect a coin, I don't think. I know. I don't trust them. I don't trust them at all. I don't trust them. I think they're sexless freaks. I agree. Tony, I agree. You're 100% right. You're here to hear first. Um, John, I know you got to get rolling. Um, just a few oh, more things can, about Graham can, Bell. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll go to two in your beast. He also invented a speedboat. Did you know that? He invented a speedboat in 1919 that on Lake Nova Scotia hit 70 miles per hour. I mean, wow. which is classic. He's a rich dude at this point. And when you're a rich dude, what do you do? You get a speedboat. Speedboat. Yeah. In what sense. year? This is 1919. 1919. Bro, cars couldn't go that fast. And he gets it, he's out there, wow. which I guess makes sense, maybe less resistance, I don't know. But he's got an, it's called an HD4 model. Um, he collaborated with some others to, to um, set a water speed record, and it stood for a decade. That stood until the 70s, dude. World War II, really? all that shit. Boats weren't going 70 miles per hour. No. Is he in Canada at that point? Yeah, he's Nova in Lake Nova Scotia. So he, yeah, he's like Scottish. Then he moved to Canada, and then he came to the States. And then he, when he invented oh. the telephone, they like the United States immediately made him a citizen. They're like, "We like you. We'll keep you." Yeah. Um, in World War One, like all good things, it's Canadian. Dude, Canadians, Canadians rip. Dude, he Canadians said he's are Scottish. Pretty but yeah, yeah, but he's, he's a Scottish Canadian. by way of Canada. Moved to Can emigrated to uh, Canada and then to the states. He's like, "What's going on down there?" Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Maybe you guys want to answer a few phone calls and bone out of here. Any other questions about yeah. Graham oh, yeah. Bell? I mean, you know, he made that phone call. He said, Mr. Watson, come here. I need you. So, you know, what needed him for. Yeah. Uh, yoink, yoink, yoink. There, here's a 100%. 100%. Dude. Hey, come over here. I need to metal detect you real quick. Can I put my fingers down your waistband? Yeah. 
Um, I think there's a bullet in your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just don't check the left side of my dick. Uh, so people that were then interviewed, this is like um, an interview in like the 30s. Um, and this was, I felt kind of interesting. This is a poll taken of U.S. citizens in 38 and what they thought of the telephone. So 76, it's developed. They said about like seven years later, there was a, a network of cell of, of phones, like on the East coast businesses and stuff. And then after that, like 50 years of expansion, like basically they're in households and, and you know, they're, they have like the rotary dial phone. So people are, they're using them widely. Right. And of course the war effort increased it. They try to like, um, the government tried to take over like all the phone stuff because Gra uh, Graham Bell had AT and T was his company. He had a monopoly, and then it was like fair yeah. interest that he had to like split up his companies into seven other companies to create, you know, so it was more Bell capitalistic. South and the Bell North. You had you used to rent when I was a kid. You had to r go to the store and rent the phone from the phone company. Yeah, and to, you didn't they own your own phone. You no. rented a phone. Exactly, kind of how it's a the router same with is the now. Modem. They won't give yeah. you the modem. You're, you're, it's not your modem. Yeah. Um, but people said, and this is interesting, of like. Basically, the fear of technology has always been there, but they're like, uh, this was basically a question like, what do you think the phone will do for us after 50 years of, of usage? And people said, and the, it's sort of a mixed reviews. They said it will create new job opportunities, allow public feedback, make the world smaller, increase contact between people of all nations, and thus fostering world peace. They then said it will increase <laughs> crime and aid criminals. It will aid physicians, police, fire, and emergency workers. It'll be a valuable tool for journalists, bring people closer together, decrease loneliness. I don't know about that, Danielle. Uh, Bill or John with Savannah. Tony, you got the double fuck. Yep. Tony got the double fuck. Yeah, I did the double fuck. Um, <laughs> Nobody wanted to talk to me yeah. after that. <laughs> <laughs> they said it will inspire a decline in the art of writing. Uh, it will have an impact and on language did. patterns and introduce new words. Yeah. I mean, you could say like with like a sort of like Twitter's a tablature, 140 characters. There's sort of an artistry to that. But then like everyone puts like no one writes full words now and no one can spell. I can't like I, if I don't have spell check, like I'm done. Um, they said overall it will lead to a, 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 de a degradation of intelligence. <laughs> The telephone did. That's so interesting. And now I think about how the art of the phone call is lost. Right. Now, like back when I was a kid, it was like that. I was talking to an old friend of mine about this, like how like you had like a half hour allotted because he lived in a different area code. Mm -hmm. My parents would give me and you'd get on. And the way you would talk on the phone was totally different. Like you were fine with leaving long pauses and like, you know, there like there wasn't the like. I have people who are younger than me that I'll be like, I'll call them and they'll be like, why are you calling? They just text. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. I don't know. I want to talk on the phone. I mean, obviously they can't stand me. Um, <laughs> like, maybe that's just, you're like, look, is. the apocalypse <laughs> is coming. I need to adopt you. Come on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm calling random eight year olds going, listen, yeah. if there's an apocalypse. <laughs> I need to adopt. What's your talent? <laughs> um, hey kid, what's your talent? <laughs> can you tap? Um, but like, I think it's funny how each iteration, it, I think the thing is once the technology becomes an appliance, that and people take it for granted and ignore it, which I think like kids, like the generation of like 12 to like 20 now, I think they see the internet as an appliance. Right. It's just something that exists. I think once it's baked in, then it no longer is special and they're not apoplectic the way we are who were on the cusp of an analog to a digital experience. We are in, we are a crisis generation. That's like, what's happening. It's going to destroy us all. And, totally. you know, uh, it probably will, but, uh, and that exists. It's probably a gap the generation. 100%. I feel like that's every generation. Every generation kind of hates the younger kids. They're doing it wrong. Like they're the little brothers. You know what I mean? You're like, what the fuck are you doing? wearing that jacket. You're not going out in that jacket. You know what I mean? It's like sort of that mentality, but extrapolate it to tech. Um, we should take a call before John gets off. If you have a caller, you have oh, a call. Do you take no, calls? That was my that was my alarm for John. I said it, but oh, oh but okay. My, I was um, like, oh my god, I don't think he takes calls. calls. <laughs> I was like, let's talk to a weird caller, dude. That would be fun. that's so much fun. You guys take well a little bit about your podcast before we get out of here. Tell some of the listeners what you guys do on on the Phony Caller Show with Johnny and Tony. Well, we don't take calls either. You guys basically just well, call each other. We do have a guest and... that calls in. We do we have guests, yeah. Anyway. And it's where we have a guest who's usually a friend or someone we know somewhat. Um, and we'll chat with them. Um, 
but uh, it starts out like a regular call, just shooting the shit. And then actually the way we would even just between the two of us, if we got bored of each other, we'd, you know, do a character voice. Or if one of us brought something up, the other one would sort of, you know, do something to entertain the other. So we end up uh, improvising uh, a little bit. And then um, we do a three way and then we play a very popular game called Johnny's Game, where Johnny <laughs> uh, delivers puns. Uh, or delivers questions or clues that should lead to both myself and the other guest guessing what the pun answer would be. And we can either play against each other or with each other on the same team, but the points are then lowered. That's and then awesome. at the end, we go back through the improv and uh, and put sound effects and sort of soundscapes on it to make it really feel enhanced. Painstakingly. Uh, and oh, he yeah. does all the sound design. Yeah, and then to also cover whatever piss poor improv we've done. <laughs> Even good improv, correct me if I'm wrong, is like 15% success hit rate. Like, you got to get through a lot Not of us. tough. Like, you know, you know, damn straight. It's zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> we also weigh ourselves sometimes to see. Oh, yeah, we have a better. thing called uh, the fattest friend where we both weigh ourselves and then whoever is has is lighter can tell the other one you are the fattest friend <laughs> that's hilarious that's hilarious and they can offer the most love maybe because of that yes yes right. but it's a weight positive i mean we're very weight positive yeah i love that you guys are very positive guys you guys are beasts um want to answer a couple questions before we get the hell out of here yeah is that cool you guys got time oh, yeah. Yeah. john i know you got to go get your yeah. kid i mean i don't want him i don't know what age he is i don't want him to get offered his first cigarette while you're on my podcast you know and you gotta go where'd you get that or, you know, learn his first swear oh, word or fine. something like that. Okay, good. Yeah. I remember when I first said, fuck, my dad asked me, where'd you learn to do that? I said, outside Ballpark Pizza. He said, you're not going to Ballpark <laughs> Pizza anymore. I robbed myself of good pizza for years. Um, oh, can I tell you, my son, I have two sons. My seven-year-old son yesterday, he had forgotten his, he had left his lunchbox at school the day before. So I gave him a different bag for his lunch. I picked him up yesterday. He had his lunchbox that he'd left, but not the other one. I said, oh, good, you have your lunchbox, but where's the um, where's the other lunch bag I gave you? He goes, oh, shit, turns around and runs back to go get no it. No way. And it was, not even, it was not even like when kids start swearing, yeah. they do it sort of concertedly. Yeah. You know, yes. to sort of test the boundaries to it. This was so natural. It was so just like he'd been saying it for years. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Yeah. You got to let fantastic. that slide. You're like, all right. Yeah. You know, he's not demeaning anyone. No, it was kinda... so natural. That's hilarious. Well, yeah. We've also been a number of speakerphone calls where I don't know I'm on speakerphone and I oh, yeah. swear like a sailor. And he's like, the kids. Yes. The kids. They're little I've already sponges. said like seven horrible things. <laughs> 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 All right, let's do a, let's do a question, right, then yes. we'll cruise. Um, what up, Strider and Stick Tater? That's Aaron, dude. Beast Aaron. Um, I was wondering if you could give a shout out to my dank fiance, Alexandra. We are huge fans of your work and your pod last year. She got a cameo for your birthday and it was stoked, dude. I'd love to hear that. December 14th, we're getting legally married, even though our wedding ceremony and party isn't until January 20th, 2022. Um, I've had the biggest crush on her for 11 years. She truly is my queen. She still fills my stoke tank every day. And I can't believe I finally landed this absolute smoke show of a human being. I love her more than anything. And I'm fired up to spend the rest of my life with her. So I really appreciate it. Stay stoked. And I love you, Alexandria. So that's just a straight up shout out. We do those sometimes. <laughs> that's just a Not shout a out. question. That's a shout that's out. A straight shout. And that's awesome, dude. Just sending his wife, Alexandria, some love. Congrats to you guys. Freaking legends. Uh, love that. Yo, Strider and Aaron, freaking what up? I'm a student in my junior year at state school in the Midwest. The winter, I'm spending the whole semester abroad in exchange program in France. I've studied French for many years, so I think I can get along speaking pretty well. But I have some cues. Do you ever go abroad? What's the best way to approach the ladies in Europe? I also want to see some more of Europe. What are the best places to visit in your opinion? I don't think there are more cultured. There's a more cultured man with more experience than that with you. Uh, thank you, dude. Any help you can give would be dank. P.S. Shout out to my brother living the de the banking life like Patrick Bateman. Thanks, Hank. Hank. All right, that's sick. Okay, so he's going yeah. abroad to France. So he has a psychopathic killer brother. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. Dude, yeah, Patrick Bateman style, dude. He drops that at the end. I have a serial killer 
trader, day trader brother. Yeah, he drops chainsaws on women running down his apartment. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to Europe. Did you guys travel abroad? I mean, look, I mentioned earlier, I'm not the biggest ladies man. I got my one lady. Um, I mean, you're in Europe. I'd say, you know, take a few risks, go out, have a, have a, a midday beer. I think they do that in Europe and, and start talking to some Maybe people. get a job in a French Cambodian restaurant and John. see if you can cozy up to the wife. Now <laughs> we're wife. talking, um, baby. They should go to Cheat Amsterdam. They should on... definitely go to the Netherlands and visit okay. the Netherlands because it's a wonderful country and the Dutch are wonderful people. Yep. Very passive aggressive, but they're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, take a day trip to South Bruges. Africa. Yeah, well, except that part. <laughs> yeah, Bruges, um, good, beautiful. In Bruges, the native great Dutch, not the not the other ones. Um, and uh, Bruges is beautiful. And uh, you know, I think uh, like uh, anywhere, approach uh, these women like human beings and uh, engage them uh, in an appropriate them. fashion. Harvest the European Appro women. Harvest. Approach them in a in a normal <laughs> fashion and. And then if they say, uh, sock le bleu, leave me alone, leave them alone. Yep. No, no. Practice your listening. No <laughs> means no in every language. You. Nyet, no. <laughs> Nev means no. But also we, you know, and, and that's a nice one to hear. Get yeah, yourself a you nice. Get a we. Baby, you're in France. Get yourself a nice slice of French bread and a good Bordeaux and just sit at an outdoor cafe. And you know, yeah, that's the way to enjoy do it. Yourself, Drink during man. the day for sure. Yeah, they, get, they're all about that. Yeah, definitely get drunk. Um, <laughs> get drunk and then try to business be hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> John, what do you and think? What's your take? A great Any... time to travel all over the world. That's, yeah, that's it's a, a, yes. This is the best time to be going to France. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, uh, Hank. Don't be dissuaded here by any sort of pandemic or anything. Go out and spread your seed. Uh, enjoy <laughs> yourself. Spread whatever you got. Spread it around. Yes. <laughs> Get wanded in the airport, and from there, it's all uphill, baby. Uh, or it's all downhill, I should say. D um, but, Not dude, you know, lot. be safe. Have fun. Enjoy yourself, dude. Get some culture. Go to some museums. You are you got plenty of places to go on. Walk. I imagine every day involves walking in Europe. And that's what I imagine. Go to a yellow vest riot. Go to one of those yellow vest riots. You meet people there. Yeah. They, Working people. Yeah. Or a, like one of those um, walking techno fests. You know, you could just do, I feel, feel like oh, they yeah. do that in Europe a lot. That's sick. Um, all right, let's do one more than bone out of here. What do you guys say? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yo, Strider, what up? Um, I want to get crossfaded with my boys this holiday season, but I have so much family shit, and so do they. It's hard to find a day when we are all in town and free. What do you think we should do to have some fun on our tight schedules? Thank you, Trent. So, Where this, are they? Uh, it doesn't sound doesn't like they're able to say, schedule a day. It sounds like he, there is back home, he's back in his hometown. But yeah, they're like, yeah, what's an all, I don't know, Zoom? Just do like a Zoom. We're not going to throw out suggestions for a, a thing that they can't schedule. Yeah. I don't know what him and his, well, what are him and his boys supposed to They can't schedule it. He's like, I mean, he says they got too much family shit. Um, it's hard to find a day when we're all town and free. So what should we do? I don't know. Well, yeah. here's what I would do is get a quorum. Basically, yeah. find enough people who are free. Let the other ones know. We'd love for you to join us, but if you can't, we're going to get together because, you know, who knows how the world's going to be. And then go meet at an outdoor place, someplace maybe with picnic tables or something like that. You know, do it on the cheap. Go to the supermarket, get some beers. I like that. Get it, you know, get, get, get some dogs and stuff. Do some outdoor winter grilling. Have some beers, hang out, then go home. I imagine... Make a Google Doc or a Google Calendar, and everybody write down when your dates are and whatever overlaps. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> that's your day. What are those things called? Those fucking little Google, like those sheets, doodles. People send those to each other. You know what they should do? Yeah. I imagine Trent's got another dude, another buddy there. Just you got to create a lot. You got to basically you have to one up Christmas or a Christmas Eve dinner by creating an event. You need to you need to lie. And say, hey, one of my boys is going to go work on an oil rig, or he's having a big surgery. You know, just yeah. lie to your friends and family. So like the beginning one of Armageddon. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Trent's buddy Brent is going to go work on an oil rig. We're not going to see him for a year. We need to go out. So your family, you need to create yeah. that. So your family, then you just go to your, you know, one of your basements and get crossfaded, like you said you want to. Yeah. Post you got to have an occasion. Yeah. 
get high, uh, gorge yourself on yes. like five guys or something. Ooh, Aaron's uh, gonna be happy sick, to hear that. Fall asleep together. Yeah, dog. I mean, John, you said five guys. Have you ever had in and out? Yes. Oh yeah, bro. What's better? What's better? I. What's the best, John? What's the best in version of in and out? Bro? Burger King's the best. <laughs> Whoa. I actually Blast don't me. prefer In N Out. I've gotten trouble. I, I got in trouble on Doughboys for this. Yeah, this, I, this is I don't bad. prefer In N Out. It's too salty and it goes cold very quickly. Yeah, you gotta eat it there. Yeah, it does go cold. Does not travel. Yeah. But most fast food doesn't travel. We want a too Burger well. King sponsorship. That's why we we're <laughs> Smart. We, we've been we've been cruising for a Burger King sponsorship for since years. Our Twitch channel. Branding. It's not happening. The phony collie show like with Tony and Johnny brought to you by Burger King. <laughs> Let's we, go. We would be so thrilled. We're loading an Xbox. Those are the two we want Burger King and Xbox. Yeah. Dude, that would be great. Xbox. I love gaming. Can you imagine? What do you play? What do you game? I yeah, what's War your game? I do Warzone. I basically do Warzone or FIFA. Oh. Yeah. We're Black Ops. Yeah, Black, Black Ops is very fun. Very fun. I, I love I like first Black person Ops shooters. Because you could do the private boards. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could just do you and your. And your but your bros. Yeah, we would do that multiplayer, Play hard points, really fun. Really yeah. fun. It's all the time. They have well, the I'll tell map. you a setting if you ever play uh, Black Ops. You want to do two two main weapons. You want to do a bazooka, uh, <laughs> and, and you want to do that grenade like launcher gun, okay? So you don't have any main weapon, no multi-fire weapon. It's just bombs. And you then you do wild smoke. card where you can get two secondary or two primaries as your primaries. Uh, overkill. And then yeah. you do smoke. Uh, uh, you do a, a landmine. Yeah. And what, what, what's the Claymore's other one? John? Like oh, and, uh, and grenades. Yep. And uh, and then you should really basically shut down all of the like things that would help you. Those those attributes. You you make them perks. so that they're not really. Yeah, perks. He usually then, knows the names for these things. I don't know what's happening. That's like you do it on all. Nuke. You're you going do it on raw. Nuketown, and that's a fun time. That's <laughs> not. And yeah, and everyone has to play that way, right? Yeah, everyone has yes, to play the same. That's really fun. Rules. Yeah, that's really fun. I liked it. in Halo. My brothers and I used to do. We play the prisoner level, and we would say you could only throw grenades and punch each other. You can't use weapons. So you'd yeah. run around and just like try to use plasma, like tag each other with plasmas, and then hit each other. It was so much fun. Yeah. Dude, a lot of fight, a lot of actual yeah. hitting each other went down after those. Really fun. Yeah, you yeah. were local. Yeah, this was like growing up. This was like I've got three yeah. brothers, so we'd all play together. It was great. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah. Landing, landing the systems so and nice. playing in someone's house, like bringing a TV. I used to bring a television to my friend's house. Dude, that's what we used to go over so to Terry fun. Jin's house. This is in at UCB. We would go over to his house with multiple Xboxes and TVs and play in separate rooms. Halo. Dude, it's so much. Fun. That's like the like landing, right? Land partying. Dude, yeah. it's so much fun. Yeah, land that's what the holidays is, dude. Trent, that's what you need to do. Go land with your boy. Land, dude. Trent. <laughs> go land, get land bro. <laughs> What are you get online doing, multiplayer, dude? land. And you're going to be getting crossfitted land. anyways while you're landing. And then no one drives home. You stay up all night. It's great. Um, dude, yeah. Tony, Johnny, thank you guys so much for coming on History is Dank. This has been such a treat. Thank um, you. Thank, thank you, you guys, This was man. a lot of fun. Thank you what for having fun. us on. So much fun. Um, I could honestly be a fly on the wall listening to you guys go all day. Um, you guys have impeccable taste in comedy. You deliver it uh, just as well. Um, and you guys have freaking salient, dank-ass points to make. And you brought the podcast <laughs> to the next level today. So I'm fired up, dude. I think we became quick bros. Um, and we took the shortcut to friendship through this medium. Uh, we thank did. you guys so we much. Did. You have to come on. You have to come on the Phony and Kali show. Please. If that's you qualify like. for the three-way now. Guys, I would love to do that. I would love. Yeah, if you want to know what it's like to be on an unpopular, unlistened to podcast. I've got one <laughs> rule to come on a podcast is I have to check your waistband first. And I will fly to New York to do it, Tony. I will. That's fine. Um, guys, thank you so much. Listen to the phony and Collie show with Tony and Johnny. They're right here, right here on ATC. Um, anything else to say before you guys go out? You got your special on the 20th. This is going to come out after. Right. So go back and find it and listen to it because it's got a kick ass lineup. It'll be right there. It'll be It'll right, be right there. there. You yeah. can find it. It'll be right there. And if right you go there. to our ATC page, 
Yes. Are there still 15 copies of each episode on that page? Yes. It will <laughs> be whatever the latest episode is will not be on the ATC page. Yeah. By the way, yeah, they <laughs> only have it up to episode four on on ATC. Quality, quality work. Well, like we said, you know, before we started, you guys don't get a studio. I get the nice studio. You guys got to do it from home. So exactly. I mean, look, I got I got the proper treatment. You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing right here, but I'm doing. We'll something. ask you. You come on the podcast. We'll ask you about about what. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna ask you all we'll about what's going on. Let me give you a hint. You gotta have the sponsors, and I got Burger King, baby. What? I got the what? king in my corner. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Stay stoked. You guys are legends. Um, have a safe, Thank happy you. holiday season, guys. Thank you so much, Tony and Johnny. Bye. Thank you. Let you.